Hello, this is Dr. Sheila Gallagher. I'm the author of Excluded, Chinese Immigration to the United States. Excluded is published by Royal Fireworks Press. It was developed as part of a Javits grant called Problem-Based Learning in the Social Sciences. The unit was pilot tested in several North Carolina high schools, although it's easy to adapt the unit for middle school programs as well. In 2002, Excluded won the NAGC Curriculum Division Award for Exemplary High School Curriculum. In this presentation, we'll take a walk through Excluded so you get a sense of how the scope and sequence unfolds. Along the way, I'll take time to describe some of the lesson plans, activities, assessments, and rubrics that are included in the unit. I'll also describe different supports that are included in the teacher manual so you can be successful teaching excluded even if you're new to problem-based learning. Many American history texts approach the study of immigration in the late 1800s by focusing on the East Coast and the immigrants who came from Europe. Excluded takes a look at another wave of immigration, one that created a long-standing conflict between American philosophy and American policy. Excluded investigates Chinese immigrants on America's West Coast. During the course of the unit, students will learn that Chinese laborers were encouraged to come to America to help build the transatlantic railroad, but were then turned away when the need for inexpensive labor ended. They learn about this chapter of American history by being immersed in a problem at the heart of the controversy, what to do about the Geary Act. We'll get back to the story in a minute, because the story is always at the heart of a PBL unit. Those of you who are familiar with the medical model of PBL know that it's a combination of curriculum and instruction that transforms the classroom into a content-rich, inquiry-based environment. Three elements work in coordination to make PBL successful. Starting learning with an ill-structured problem, having students as a group adopt the perspective of a stakeholder, and changing the teacher role from lecturer to a guide or coach. The ill-structured problem creates the scope and sequence of the unit. It was selected and designed to introduce students to essential content aligned to national standards. As students explore the problem at the center of the unit, they move through different phases of problem solving, including problem engagement, inquiry and investigation, problem definition, problem resolution, and problem debriefing. As students follow this natural flow of activity, they're also drawn further into the content. A problem narrative is included in the teacher manual to give you a sense of how the story unfolds ahead of time, along with detailed content that students are likely to encounter at each stage. Use the narrative as a curriculum guide if you're new to PBL or if you're teaching the unit for the first time. If you're already familiar with PBL, you can use this narrative as a guiding framework to shape according to your students' questions and learning needs. The opening scenario introduces the problem, like the first chapter of a novel. As you might expect, it's carefully written to act as a catalyst, drawing questions from students that will lead them to content you want them to study. Excluded begins when students receive a memo addressed to congressmen from California, which they learn is their stakeholder role. The memo is from the legislative staff in charge of drafting a revision of some important legislation, the Geary Act, which will extend the Chinese Exclusion Act of 1882. A copy of the draft legislation is attached to the memo, along with a request that the novice congressman review the document and make suggestions for revision. The memo refers to a tidal wave of immigration causing economic and social chaos and hints that California voters are not happy with the situation a fact that should engage the curiosity of the newly appointed elected officials. Students read the memo and the draft legislation. They're usually quite surprised to find a law on the books that prohibits the Chinese from immigrating to America and have lots of questions about what's happened to bring the situation to pass. Students complete the learning issues board, listing the information they know and questions they need to answer in order to understand the problem better. They then prioritize their questions, 
selecting the top four or five they need to answer first, and create a plan of action to find answers for those top priority questions. With questions in hand, students are ready for the next stage of the problem, inquiry and investigation, where students search for answers to their questions and for a better understanding of the problem. The Excluded Resource Book and CD will give you and your students a leg up on their research efforts. They contain a wealth of primary resource materials that you can print, copy, and organize in folders, or leave around the room for the students to discover as they research. The resource book also has many replicas of historic documents, so students can get a sense of the look of the era. For example, the text of the Chinese exclusion law is accompanied by a facsimile of the original handwritten version. Connections to literature are also included in the resources, including this nonfiction essay by Mark Twain. Not only does this enrich the student's perspective, it also helps meet new Common Core standards for nonfiction reading in language arts. In problem based learning, the ill structured problem pushes students towards content you want them to learn. This allows you to spend your time helping students become expert like thinkers and self directed learners. Moments of instruction are embedded into the unit to provide you with an opportunity to develop the student's intellectual toolkit. For example, students are introduced to a force field analysis, a graphic organizer that helps identify conflicting information and differing perspectives involved in the problem. A sample completed force field is included in the teacher manual to give you an idea of how students can use it to make sense of the issues they uncover through their research. In another activity, students are provided with two opposing views on Asian immigration. Students use the documents to identify the difference between rational and emotional arguments at play in the problem. Of course, this kind of exercise is also great practice for advanced placement database questions. Another frame of reference experts use when problem solving is conceptual reasoning seeing the abstract or universal relationships that reveal deeper insights into the problem. The National Council for Social Studies has identified a set of themes or concepts that are essential to the study of history. Excluded uses the theme individuals, groups, and institutions as its conceptual focus. These concepts are translated into graphic images, a triangle for institutions, an oval for groups, and a circle for individuals. Students work with these shapes to represent the many relationships at play among the individuals, groups, and institutions in the problem. For example, the students can look at the institution of citizenship and the groups that are inside and outside that institution. They also learn about a dynamic individual, Dennis Kearney, who used the bully pulpit to rile up sentiment against the Chinese. In comparison, the individual Chinese immigrant seems very small and powerless in the institution of citizenship. Students are also introduced to the idea of conspicuously different groups and discuss why immigrant groups that had different skin color or accent often had more trouble gaining acceptance. Key question sets are included with each lesson to help bring the discussion to a conceptual level. Eventually, students understand the problem well enough that they're ready to create a specific problem definition. Students are encouraged to think of problem definition as a combination of an issue or issues in need of attention and constraints that limit how they approach the issue. For instance, students may decide that a successful solution must respect the needs of unemployed California citizens. This would be included as a constraint in the student's problem definition because they have decided that they will not consider solutions that don't address unemployment. Having reached consensus on a clear problem definition, students are ready to consider different solutions. Students learn how to translate their problem definition into criteria that help them compare different solutions. The Analyzing Solutions Matrix helps ensure that students make a well-considered, defensible decision and that they understand its ramifications. 
students present their intent to accept, amend, or reject the legislation in a speech to Congress. A template is included to help the students prepare their presentation. Once students present their solution, the story of excluded ends, but there's still one more stage to PBL, problem debriefing. Research in problem-based learning suggests that this stage helps solidify content knowledge as well as the students' awareness of their problem-solving process. Several ideas are included to help you debrief the problem with your students, including discussions of policy versus philosophy, or comparison of Asian immigration in the late 1800s with contemporary immigration issues. You could also reflect with your students on their journey through the problem, identifying the skills and the habits of mind that were necessary to do a good job. The teacher is always in charge of the story in a PBL unit, and additional content can be inserted at any time through kickers or twists in the plot. Two letters are included that could be used as kickers to highlight different perspectives on the problem. One emphasizes the need for Californians to have access to jobs. The other is from an Asian American whose elderly immigrant mother is about to be deported. These letters can be used together or separately, and of course, you could invent your own twists to the story as well. Throughout the unit, students complete a variety of assessments, most of which are compiled in the student problem log. You've already seen examples of exercises where students compare documents and apply conceptual reasoning to the problem. The unit also includes a series of rubrics for you to use at your discretion, assessing skills in research, collaboration, and critical thinking. Students also complete a number of reflective moments that ask them to summarize their research findings, apply conceptual reasoning, and reflect on what it's like to be a congressman facing a controversial issue. Special attention was paid to incorporate assessments that address common core standards, such as evidence-based research, analyzing different points of view, and, with this rubric, assessing student speaking skills. Excluded includes materials that support your journey through the problem, too. In addition to the problem narrative, there's an alignment chart that shows where different skills and ideas appear in the unit, and completed samples of the Learning Issues Board and the Force Field are also included. Also in the back of the teacher manual, you'll find several how-to essays that will help improve your skill as a PBL coach. You'll also see numerous charts demonstrating the alignment of excluded with National History and Social Studies standards, as well as with Common Core standards. If you're interested in teaching excluded, you should order the teacher manual, the student problem log, and the resource book. Another helpful book would be Problem-Based Learning in the Classroom, which is a practical guide on how to teach problem-based learning units. If you're interested in widespread use of this or other PBL units, hands-on workshops are available through Royal Fireworks Press. I hope you enjoyed this brief walk through excluded. To see slideshows describing other PBL units in this series, please visit the Royal Fireworks Press website at www.rfwp.com. Thanks for listening.